Welcome back, guys, to the hardcore run of Final Fantasy 1 for the NES. I did a little bit of money grinding, and uh, by the time I was done, our team wound up at level 28. Here's Ninja Hope stats, Red Wizard Hat stats, and Black Wizard Onyx's stats. I did quite a bit of uh, money grinding. I bought everybody uh, all their up-to-date armors and uh, weapons and everything. As well as everybody's magic. I got Hope all of his black magics and uh, picked up all the magic I could get for Hat. And of course Onyx took the longest, but I got all of his magic as well. So that's nice. Here's my items and everything. Alright. On top of earning money to get all my newest weapons, armors, and magic, I also went ahead and earned all the money that I needed to buy the bottled fairy from the Oasis here. So we'll go ahead and do that. We're pretty broke for this point in the game now, but uh, we don't really need money for anything else uh, besides ends, maybe. And uh, we got enough money to afford any of the ends that we come across, so we're all good. We'll be back to having quite a bit of money before we know it anyway. Right here is the town of Gaia. In this town you can buy uh, some level 7 spells and a couple level 8 spells as well. And you can also buy pro rings for uh, all your warriors as well as a cat claw for your black wizard if you have one. One thing that's kind of odd about uh, Gaia and Onrak, the next town that we're going to go to, is that the item shops don't have heal potions at the top of the list. The lists are all different and instead they have uh, cabins at the top of the list. I remember whenever I was younger, I used to use a turbo controller to uh, buy my heal potions while I looked at a book or something, because I'd get too bored just sitting there buying them one at a time. And well, I came to the item shop here, and I just uh, wasn't paying any attention, and, uh, well, let's just say I bought 99 cabins. But hey, they, they were still good for overworld healing, I suppose. Got the Oxyel from the Bottled Fairy now. Our next stop is Onrek, which is technically to the west of where we're at, but flying to the east is a lot quicker to get there. Whenever we get to Onrek, we have to enter the Sea Shrine, which is what we needed the Oxyel for. It's like a o oxygen beer, I guess? I don't quite understand it. Whatever the case, it lets us breathe underwater somehow. And we need that in order to enter the Sea Shrine, where we will come across the mermaids and eventually the Fiend of Water Kraken. You may have noticed that the White Wizard's HP is now 1 instead of the current HP that it was at whenever she was turned to stone. The reason why her HP is different now is because I did a return trip to the volcano in order to get the flame armor for Ninja Hope, and so she took damage while I was on the lava or whatever. Which is kind of weird that it does that, but hey. In case y'all were wondering, that's why her HP is different. We are just about to on rack, just right there it is. Alright. Dr. Oon, or Dr. Une, however you want to pronounce his name, the scholar that lives in Melmont, his brother actually is in this town. A lot of people in this town have a leg fetish, it seems. You can talk to a person that looks like a witch, and she's like, you have such beautiful legs. And there's another uh, girl that you talk to, which I would presume is a, a girl that one of the mermaids mentions down the sea shrine. Uh, she's all like, uh, it's, it's so nice to have legs, they're so beautiful, or something like that. Whatever the case, people are obsessed with legs in this town. I guess it's kind of a reference to mermaids or something, heck, I don't know. One of the few characters with a name in this game is actually in this town as well, Cope. He is the boy that we seen uh, just a moment ago before we entered the submarine. Alright, a lot of enemies won't be too much worth our time, but we will do some fighting. There is one enemy group that I don't look forward to fighting, and it's uh, ghosts. The water elementals can be kind of problematic as well, just because you can't run from them, and there are so many of them that will appear at once. But our main objective is just to go up to the top floor and get the slab from the mermaids, and then after that we will cast exit to come back to the entrance here, and then we gotta go to the bottom floor and fight Kraken. Like I was saying though, probably the most threatening enemy set in this entire dungeon is probably ghosts. One thing that I find kind of interesting is that the player's guide actually tells you to look out for Nagas, but I actually don't find Nagas to be the least bit threatening at all. But hey, whatever. There are a few pieces of equipment that I'd like to get out of treasure chests, but uh, most of the ones that I would like to get, I'm just going to make a return trip later on whenever I'm doing some leveling or something, I'll pick them up then. There are a few pieces of equipment that I do want to get on my first run through though. Namely, the Opal Bracelet. I'd like to give that to my Red Wizard, or maybe the Black Wizard. I'm unsure which one I want to give it to just yet. I might give it to the Black Wizard because he has lower defense, and the Red Mage seems to be pretty good as it is. 
We'll just have to wait and see what happens. We're not too much further from uh, the upper floor that has the mermaids on it. They're on the very top floor of the shrine, then uh, Kraken is on the very bottom floor of the shrine. Fire 3 does really good for getting rid of the ghosts, which is kind of funny considering that we're supposed to be underwater right now, but hey. Makes sense since the undead enemies are weak against fire, I suppose. Alright, with those ghosts now down and out, it's time to keep on moving. Just gotta go over here to the right, and then we go down, and we'll be at the next staircase that will lead us up to the mermaids. Yeah, it doesn't take very long to get to the mermaids. Normally, you'd have to go straight from the mermaids' uh, room on the very top floor and walk your way down to Kraken, but since we have the exit spell, that should help us out quite a bit. The Opal bracelet is right here. There we go. We'll go ahead and equip that now. Um, yeah. We'll go ahead and just give it to the Red Wizard. Since he's in the second slot, he'll be taking more hits. Alright. The slab is in the... Well, technically the slab is in the very upper rightmost room, but in order to get to that room, you have to go to the very upper left and walk this long tunnel to get to it. Once you've gotten the slab, you can take it to uh, the scholar that lives in Melmon, Dr. Un, or whatever his name is, and he'll teach you how to speak uh, Lefinish, 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 however you want to pronounce that. Alright. Got the slab, time to go ahead and cast Exit. Before we re-enter the shrine, we're going to go ahead and heal up at the end, though, really quick. We're not really doing uh, really bad in our health or magic or anything, but hey, I just want to be prepared. One thing that I kind of like here in Onrak is the cemetery that it has in the upper right. You don't really see an actual graveyard or a cemetery in the other towns, you just see graves here and there. I guess they kind of have, like, a cemetery in Elfland, but it's really just three graves. And in Melmon, they're just everywhere because of the vampire or whatever. Still, though, I like that feature about this town. My favorite town in this game is probably Gaia, though, just because it's enclosed in that valley of mountains and everything. This guy in our way is Cope that I spoke of earlier. There we go, finally he got out of our way. Had to cope with him long enough. Oh ho! Alright. Kraken is on the very bottom floor, as I said before, so that is where we are headed next. And like I said, I got the only piece of equipment that I was truly interested in getting on my first run through already, the Opal Bracelet. Everything else I'll get on my next run through whenever I'm doing some level grinding or something like that. So they can wait. Alright, go ahead and enter the staircase right now. Down we go. It'll take a little longer to, to get to Kraken than it did for us to get to the Mermaids. As I said earlier in the run, the Mermaids is probably my favorite race in this entire game. And it is kind of sad that they, uh, don't get much screen time or anything. They don't even get mentioned in the credits of the game whenever they're talking about all the races that will remember the journey of the warriors and everything. Kind of sad, but whatever. I guess one of the mermaids does kind of interact with the humans, the one that I spoke of earlier that was probably mentioned from, uh, down here. One of the mermaids mentions that one of her friends went to the surface and never returned. She said, uh, maybe she grew, maybe she grew legs and walked away. So I'm guessing one of those people that talks about her legs in Onrak is one of those mermaids. Heck, both of those ladies that talk about legs might be mermaids for all we know, but only one of them is mentioned. Whatever, though. You can't really run from these groups of Sahags if they have wizard Sahags in their team. At least I don't think you can, that's why I stayed around to fight them just now. A lot of the floors on the way to Kraken will be fairly short, just like a probably 10-15 steps long. Like this one right here. <laughs> like four steps long there. And then another really short one here. Oh, more wizard sags. We gotta do another battle. Kinda like the background of the sea shrine. I mean, the top part up there above the warriors and enemies, of course. I kinda like the way how the black wizard looks in battle, and I really like his overworld sprite. But to be honest, I kinda like his black mage sprite a little bit more. I just like having his face being hidden under that pointy hat. Still, though, he doesn't look bad as a black wizard, either. He still looks pretty cool. I think he probably has my favorite overworld sprite of them all. Of the class change people, anyway. Of the uh, non-class change people, I think the red mage is probably my favorite overworld sprite. Now the thief, he gets a drastic overhaul in his appearance, of course, going from thief to ninja. Alright, all the sahags are now down and out. Time to keep making our way deeper into the sea shrine. Like I said, quite a few really small floors. You have quite a few of them to go through, though. 
go down here. This is another fairly short floor. A little bit longer than the last two we went through, but uh, still not too big. Kind of tired of running into sahags at this point, but hey, whatever. We'll get through it. Kraken shouldn't put up too much of a fight, considering that we have uh, two mages that know Lightning 3 as well as a ninja that can help buff up the team with fast. I think we'll do okay. Healing our HP back might be kind of tricky, though, if we take a lot of damage. Of course, the Red Mage has really good healing magics, Cure 3, and stuff like that. But beyond that, we don't have much else to rely on, except for the heal staff, and that can't really pull us out of a pinch right away, so... Hopefully we can destroy Kraken before he kills off any warriors. Right after we kill off Kraken, we're gonna go ahead and go to the waterfall, but that's for later. Alright. This is the biggest floor we've come up to yet, on the way to Kraken anyway. Still though, it only takes a moment to get through, you just have to make your way up to the upper left. I'm pretty glad that no Sahags just appeared. Made that battle go quickly. Alright. Go ahead and get the, the ribbon from this treasure chest. Yeah, I guess I forgot to mention that earlier. Alright. I'm gonna be giving ribbons to all three of my warriors, even the ninja. Even though, uh, the ribbon doesn't give the ninja as much uh, defense as the silver or heal helmets will, uh, I think that the magic defense that it will, will give the ninja will be more than worth it. I don't mind losing a few uh, physical defense points in favor of more magical defense. So many sahags everywhere. Hopefully this battle won't take too long. I can make it go by faster, I suppose, if I use Lightning 3 or something, but I really don't want to waste those on a group of Sahags. I'd rather use Lightning 2 or something like that. The Zeus Gauntlet should do pretty good at removing the Red Sahags. For all we know, it could take them all out and just leave the Wizard Sahags. Or the Sahagian Prince or whatever it's called in other versions. Alright. Sahags kind of look like sea goblins, which I suppose is what they technically are, but still. Alright, let's just finish off these wizard sahags and keep on moving. We only have one more floor to go before we're at the floor that has Kraken on it, so that's good. This group of sahags now down and out, let's just keep on moving. Alright, we're now on the floor with Kraken. Just head over here to the left, you'll eventually come up to a gigantic room that you have to make your way through. The room's kind of a maze, I suppose, but it's a really easy one to figure out. We can't run from the water elementals, uh, they're actually weak to ice. Ice will do more damage to them than, than lightning will, so stick to that magic. They can hit fairly hard, and they can, they can usually appear in really big groups, especially later on the Temple of Fiends Revisited. But overall, right now, they're not too bad if we get all of our ice magics off. We should kill them off long before they'll do any serious damage. There we go. We might run into more of those, but, uh... I don't know. We, we might be lucky and not run into any. Go ahead and heal up really quick. As usual, use the Cure 1 spell before we resort to our heal potions. Alright, keep on moving. I always thought that the ninja's overworld sprite looked kind of weird. I don't know, just something about it. It could have used a little bit more design or a little bit more color to it. Instead, just kind of uh, bland with some eyeballs, like like just plain red with some eyeballs is pretty much what it looks like to me. Like they could have added the little bit of white that you see on his uh, headgear onto his overworld sprite or something. Pretty sure that they did that in the NES version of Final Fantasy 3, but still. Looks kind of bland here in Final Fantasy 1 in my opinion. And there we go. Alright, we just gotta make our way through this big room here that's kind of like a maze, a really easy one to figure out, but still. As soon as we exit this room, we're pretty much right at Kraken. In my opinion, the Fiends of Fire and Water are the two that hit the hardest physically. I would say that the Fiend of Wind is also physically powerful, but she usually just sticks to using magics like poison and uh, thunder and stuff like that is what she'll usually use. At least I'm pretty sure that the Fiend of Wind is a girl. It doesn't really matter though. Alright, heal up the team really quick and then we'll begin the battle against Kraken. There we go. We don't really need our level 3 magic so may as well just use Cure 2's. Alright, time to do battle with Kraken. Hopefully this goes well. 
On top of hitting really hard, Kraken also has a spell that he can use on you called Ink, which is pretty much the dark spell. It'll cause the darkness status to happen to certain warriors that it will affect, which really that's not all that big of a deal. Especially if you have a lamp, you can just cure it. Alright, I'm going to try to boost up the warriors right now. Mainly our physical defense, since Kraken can hit pretty hard. Go ahead and do that again really quick, and uh, we'll go ahead and use Lightning 3 with Onyx. We're going to have to start healing up Hope really soon. He's getting down there in his HP. See he does, and uh, that wasn't too terribly impressive. But hey, a little more damage is never a bad thing. Kraken has 800 HP total. Alright, go ahead and try to heal up Hope now. Keep on uh, going at it with the magic spells. I should have just been using Nuke from the get-go instead of Lightning 3. Oh well, both spells do a pretty good amount of damage to Kraken. The Black Mage is now blinded, but uh, not like it really affects him since he's using magic. Just keep going at it. We're going to go ahead and heal up Hope again. Continue going at it with the nukes. Alright, while it looks like a nuke is like a fire spell, it's actually non-elemental. So that's good. At least from what I've read, it's non-elemental. Just keep going at it. Kraken shouldn't have too much more to him. This should probably be the final turn now. Alright. Get another nuke off, and that should be the end of Kraken. Or, you know, the ninja can take him out. Either way, save us a spell point and nuke. Alright, that went pretty good. I'm glad that I didn't lose any warriors. Alright, before we go to the waterfall, we're going to go back to the inn really quick and heal up all of our HP and everything. The waterfall is pretty much just another great big maze. There are a couple of powerful enemies there, like the gas dragons. Overall, though, the waterfall isn't too terribly bad. We can get a couple of good pieces of equipment there, like the Defense Sword, which lets us cast Roos. If you cast Roos on yourself three times, you can only be hurt by physical attacks, so that's really good. Also, at the waterfall, you can get another Ribbon, which is especially good. We'll be giving that to another one of our warriors. So yeah, we got quite a few uh, good pieces of armor and weapons there. But the biggest reason why we're going there is for the next story item, which is a cube, which we'll need later on the Mirage Tower to travel up to the Sky Castle, which is where the Fiend of Wind is at. So yeah, quite a bit of stuff to do in the waterfall, but everything that we need to do is all in one big area. We just have to make our way through the maze. Once we've gotten the cube and everything out of the waterfall, we're going to make our way back down to Melmon to uh, see the scholar there, Dr. Un, Dr. Une, whatever his name is. We had to take the slab back to him, and he'll teach us how to speak uh, Lefinish, Lefinish, whatever. And uh, from there, we got to go to uh, Lefin, or Lefian? I don't know, that's a really weird name, and I don't care how it's pronounced. But we had to go to uh, the town of the Sky Warriors, which whenever we get there, we had to talk to one of them, and uh, they'll give us the chime at which the chime will let us enter the Mirage Tower. So yeah, we need quite a few items in order to get through to the Fiend of Wind. None of it's too hard to get, though. You can also get uh, level 8 uh, magics in uh, the Fiend. You can get Life 2 for your White Wizard or Nuke for your Black Wizard, which I've already done, of course, so uh, we won't be bothering with that whenever we go there. Still, though, kind of nice. That's actually the only shops that are in that town. Nothing else is there. Still a pretty neat looking town. Everything's like symmetrical. It's got a pretty good amount of water in it with several really long bridges. Too long in my opinion. They'll go past the river that you're walking over. Still, it looks kind of neat I suppose. We're not too much further from uh, the area that we're trying to go here. The guy that I mentioned back in Onrek uh, that has the name Cope, he actually tells you that he thinks that he's seen a robot go to the waterfall. The robots come into play later on. You'll see them all over in the Mirage Tower. It's apparently uh, stuff that was built by the Sky Warriors who were supposed to like maintain stuff, I think. Something like that. You'll see quite a few of them in the Mirage Tower, but that's really about the only other place you'll see robots. Alright, just about to our destination, just all the way down here. Alright, here we are. Yeah, we got a little spiked square here with some mummies. 
Sometimes other enemies will appear with them as well. We may as well go, and go ahead and wipe out these mummies. we got plenty of uh, powerful magics to do it with. Once we've taken out all the mummies and gotten all the treasures that we need, we'll just use a uh, warp or some other spell to get us out of here quickly. Then from here, like I said, we're going to Melmond, and uh, after that we got to go get the chime and everything from Lefian. Alright, just letting Nuke do its work for now. Hitting pretty hard on these mummies. Alright, there we go. Gotta talk to the robot to get the cube, and then we'll get our treasures, and out of here we go. Like I said before, the waterfall isn't too bad. It does have some powerful enemies, but nothing too terribly strong. I'd say the biggest threat in this waterfall, like I said earlier, is gas dragons. You can easily run, run from the golems. They're no threat at all. They can hit pretty hard, but really, they're not really that big of a threat. There's our next ribbon. We'll go ahead and equip that now. Go ahead and stick that on Onyx. We'll give our last ribbon to Hope. Alright, keep getting all of our treasures. We got a pretty good amount of money. Not that we really need the money or anything. And the Defense Sword. Awesome. Alright, we'll go ahead and cast a Warp here in just a moment. There we go. We are now out of the Waterfall. Yeah, the Defense Sword is a pretty powerful weapon. I actually usually leave that on my Red Wizard over the Sun Sword. Technically, the Sun Sword is supposed to be stronger, but I, I like the way how the Defense Sword looks. Not to mention the Defense Sword has a nice added spell bonus to it, so that's good. Alright, we're headed back to the airship right now. Just avoiding all these uh, random encounters that we can on the canoe. Alright, just keep making our way to the airship. Not too much further from it. Right there it is, alright. Uh, yeah, I figured we'd have another random encounter before we got to it. That's alright, though. It'll only take a second to get down to Melmond. And once we get there, it's as easy as talking to the doctor and learning our new language. Alright, over here to the east. Park the airship right here. Alright. Yeah, like I said earlier, the town is just pretty much surrounded in tombstones in this town. Not to mention the ground is all rotted and everything. Get out of the way! Uh, that guy back there was annoying. <laughs> At least you see a couple of trees alive in this town, I suppose. Alright, just like that, we have now learned our newest language. Alright, time to leave Melmont. Alright, our next destination will be to go to Lithian, get the chime, and then it's onward to the Mirage Tower and Sky Castle to take out the Fiend of Wind. We'll also be getting a couple of good pieces of equipment there, but we'll get to that later on. But for now, we've done everything that we need to do, and that is it for Part 5.